So these are the 11 things they're not telling you about the new era of quantum computing. Number 11. Quantum supremacy might already be achieved. In 2019, Google made history when its 53-qubit Sycamore processor performed a complex random sampling task in just 200 seconds, something that would have taken the world's fastest supercomputer, Summit, around 10,000 years. The paper, published in Nature, coined the term quantum supremacy, marking the first time a quantum device decisively outperformed a classical one. But IBM immediately pushed back, claiming the same calculation could be simulated on a classical computer in about 2.5 days. Since then, China's University of Science and Technology, USTC, has built two machines, Zhu Zhang and Zhu Kong Z, that achieved similar results using photons and superconducting units. These experiments were validated but not widely publicized. Many experts think that's deliberate. Once a machine consistently achieves real-world quantum advantage, it could threaten global encryption systems, financial models, even military communications. So, if you notice governments staying unusually quiet about their breakthroughs, that silence might be the loudest signal yet. Number 10. Software is the real battlefield. When people think of quantum computing, they imagine shiny processors cooled to near absolute zero, but the real race isn't in hardware. It's in software. Quantum computers don't speak the same language as classical ones. They need specialized frameworks to control phenomena like superposition and entanglement. That's why companies like IBM created QuizKit. Google built Circ. And Canada's Xanadu developed Penny Lane, which bridges quantum and classical systems. According to McKinsey's 2024 Quantum Technology Report, global investment in quantum software has tripled since 2020, passing $2.1 billion. Even Amazon and Microsoft now offer cloud-based simulators for developers to test algorithms. The challenge is writing code that stays stable despite no noise in quantum errors, something traditional programming can't handle. Whoever develops the first scalable quantum operating system could end up controlling the foundation of this new computing era. The hardware may be impressive, but the real war is happening quietly in code. Number 9. Cryptography could be the first real casualty. Every message you send, from bank logins to private emails, relies on encryption based on mathematical problems that classical computers can't solve quickly. But quantum computers can. In 1994, mathematician Peter Shore proved that a large enough quantum computer could break RSA encryption, the backbone of nearly all digital security. And that's not speculation. It's proven math. Once a stable, fault-tolerant quantum system is built, it could decrypt information that's considered unbreakable today. Governments know this, which is why the U.S. National Institute of Standards and Technology, NIST, has been working on post-quantum cryptography standards since 2016, finalizing them in 2024. Other nations are doing the same. The real threat isn't just future breaches. It's data being stolen now, stored, and decrypted years later once quantum power arrives. That's why cybersecurity experts call quantum both a technological revolution and a global ticking clock. Number 8. The Global Quantum Race Quantum computing isn't just a scientific milestone. It's a geopolitical one. The United States, China, and the European Union are in a high-stakes race to dominate the field. China's Quantum Project 2030 is building a nationwide quantum communication network and already launched the MISIUS satellite to transmit encrypted quantum data between continents. The U.S. is pushing ahead through the National Quantum Initiative, involving NASA, the Department of Energy, and major universities. Meanwhile, the EU's 
whose quantum flagship, renewed in 2024, committed over a billion euro to research and commercialization. Private companies like IBM, Google, and Intel are working alongside governments, but national security interests drive most of the funding. Whoever wins this race could control the next generation of encryption, AI, and computational infrastructure. It's the 21st century version of the space race. Except, this time, the battlefield isn't the sky. It's the quantum realm. Number 7. Quantum's real impact starts in specific fields. You probably won't have a quantum laptop sitting on your desk anytime soon. But major industries are already experimenting with the technology behind the scenes. Pfizer and IBM are using quantum computers to simulate molecular interactions that could accelerate drug discovery. Daimler is exploring new battery materials for electric vehicles, hoping to improve performance and lifespan. Volkswagen and Airbus are testing quantum algorithms to optimize delivery routes, air traffic, and fuel efficiency. These are early pilots, but they reveal how quantum will first impact science and industry rather than consumers. According to Boston Consulting Group, quantum computing could add $450 to $850 billion in annual value by 2040. That means the first real wave of benefits will come quietly in medicine, energy, and logistics, long before quantum devices show up in your home. Number 6. The Silent Struggle with Errors and Instability Quantum computers might sound futuristic, but they're extremely fragile. Each qubit can lose its quantum state in a fraction of a millisecond due to even tiny vibrations, heat, or magnetic noise. To stay stable, these machines are kept inside cryogenic systems that operate at temperatures near absolute zero, colder than deep space. IBM, Google, and Quantanuum are working on error correction, but the math is brutal. Right now, it takes thousands of physical qubits to make just one fully stable, logical qubit. In 2024, IBM's Heron chip reduced error rates by about 60%, yet full-scale correction remains years away. Quantum decoherence, when information leaks out of the system, is still the field's biggest roadblock. Until that's solved, we're dealing with powerful but incredibly temperamental machines that can collapse from something as small as a stray photon. Number 5. It's not about more qubits, but better ones. Quantum companies love to brag about how many qubits their chips have, but here's the truth. More isn't always better. A 2025 Nature Physics study showed that qubit quality, how long they stay stable, and how well they connect matters more than raw count. IBM's 433 qubit Condor chip set records, but many of those qubits can't maintain coherence long enough for meaningful calculations. That's why researchers focus on quantum volume, a metric that measures both quality and scalability. In simple terms, it's not about having thousands of shaky qubits. It's about having a smaller network of qubits that can reliably talk to each other. Google, Rigetti, and Atom Computing are now exploring modular systems that link smaller processors together. The race ahead isn't for the biggest chip. It's for the one that works the smartest and stays stable the longest. Number 4. The Quantum Hype Cycle Quantum computing is right where artificial intelligence was a decade ago. Surrounded by hype, struggling to deliver, but steadily progressing behind the scenes. According to Gartner's 2024 hype cycle, quantum technology currently sits in the trough of disillusionment, the phase where inflated expectations meet harsh technical reality. Startups that once raised tens of billions in 2021 are now merging or downsizing as investors realize how difficult it is to stabilize and scale quantum hardware. But that doesn't mean the dream is fading. IBM, Google, and Quantinuum continue to publish peer-reviewed progress on error correction and system reliability. IBM's 2025 roadmap even predicts utility-scale quantum systems within two years. So yes, the buzz has quieted, but that's often when real breakthroughs happen. 
When quantum finally clicks, the headlines will seem small compared to the scale of what's coming. Number three, quantum advantage exists, but barely. You probably heard the phrase quantum advantage. It means a quantum computer can outperform the best classical computer at a specific task. Google's 2019 Sycamore experiment technically did that, solving a random sampling problem in minutes that would have taken classical system thousands of years. But that result had no real world application. Since then, IBM and Quantinuum have demonstrated smaller advantages in chemistry and optimized simulations. Useful, but still research grade. In early 2025, MIT Technology Review confirmed that no company has yet achieved consistent, practical quantum advantage outside controlled environments. The biggest leap so far came when IBM simulated a lithium hydride molecule with accuracy classical methods couldn't match. But even that required hybrid computing support. Quantum advantage exists, but it's fragile, expensive, and far from changing your everyday life. Number two, the quantum investment boom isn't all gold. Quantum computing has become one of the most heavily funded tech frontiers of the decade. McKinsey's 2025 Quantum Report estimates over $35 billion in global, public, and private investment, spanning more than 350 startups and research ventures. The problem? Many of them are running into the same wall. Error correction and scalability. Just like the dot-com or blockchain booms, some companies are promising revolutions they can't yet deliver. Experts call it quantum inflation, where marketing runs faster than physics. Analysts even warn of a potential quantum winter in the next few years, as overhyped ventures collapse under unmet expectations. Yet, failure here doesn't mean regression. Each dead end produces better data, new materials, and smarter algorithms. Even if half of today's startups vanish, the technology they pioneer will push the survivors decades ahead. Quantum might slow down, but it's not stopping. Number 1. Quantum computing won't replace classical computers one of the biggest misconceptions about quantum computing is that it'll replace classical machines entirely. Well, it won't. The real future is hybrid, where quantum systems work alongside traditional processors. Quantum excels at problems involving massive optimization or molecular simulation, while classical computing remains unbeatable for everyday processing, databases, and communication. IBM calls this the quantum-centric supercomputer, combining quantum processors with AI and HPC systems under one architecture. Microsoft's Azure Quantum and Google Cloud's hybrid frameworks already let developers run quantum and classical tasks in parallel. These setups are what scientists call co-processing, where both systems share the workload. The end goal isn't competition, but cooperation. Quantum computers will act like specialized teammates, tackling the impossible calculations while classical ones handle the rest. Together, they'll unlock solutions we couldn't even model before. If you made it this far, let us know what you think in the comment section below. For more interesting topics, make sure you watch the recommended video that you see on the screen right now. Thanks for watching.